So we are going to get started for today's lesson already. Everyone ready? Okay, first of all, let's all look at the general rules, of course. Okay, be, be kind. I always trip out on this announcement. Okay, be kind, patient, and understanding. And of course, observe gracious and behavior. Gracious and behavior. Wow. Gracious and respectful behavior, even though this is a virtual space. And of course, there'll be times for you to ask questions, but due to the large number of students, I wouldn't be able to answer every single one of them. So we do seek your understanding that we cannot reply to every single question. Okay, but I'll try my best to answer as many as possible. Okay, now today we are embroaching on a new topic called heat. Okay, I'm not sure if you have seen this topic in school yet. So just a quick reply in the chat. Have you done this topic in school? Yes or no? No, 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 no. No, yes. Reply only once, huh? So that I can get a good idea. Uh, okay, I think like 60% no. Hey, of course I'm asking the P4s. <laughs> if you are P6 and say yes, you are skewing my results. Um, P fours. Okay, so I see about sixty percent. Yeah, sixty percent of students saying no, not yet, but other forty percent yes. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna teach through the entire topic as if you are learning it for the very first time. Okay, so we are going to go a little slower. Okay, first of all, let's look at some of the pictures that you see over here, and all these diagrams are related to heat and temperature. How are you able to tell whether these are related to heat and temperature? How can you tell from the first image here? What is the image? We are, uh, it's probably water, water in a beaker or a flask. And where is the heat? Where is the heat? It comes, okay, it comes from the fire. Okay, it seems like this is something related to heat. Okay, and what about for the second picture? The second diagram, we have a saucepan probably making some, I don't know, corn soup or something. Okay, the fire too. Okay, this is telling us something about heat. Okay, is there any other, um, you know, clues in the diagram that tells us that there is some kind of heat going on? Ooh, steam, okay. This white color mist over here, we don't know what that is yet. You'll learn this in P4, uh, sorry, P5. But this is actually an indication of something related to heat too. Okay, what about the last one? The last one recently in the last year or so, you definitely have seen this, especially when you go to the malls and e-shops. Yes, that is a thermometer, right? And this is something related to heat as well. Okay, so for today, what are we actually doing? Okay, so before we move on into the lesson objectives, these are some of the questions that we have to ask ourselves when we are dealing with heat. Okay, so we have to ask ourselves, what exactly is heat? What is the definition of heat? And what does it actually do? Okay, and next, what is temperature? You've heard the word temperature being thrown around, especially in this pandemic. But what does that term mean? Okay, so you learn about these two terms and then understand what's the difference between heat and temperature. And... Over here, point four, why do some things become hot or cold? Okay, later down the chapter, we are going to learn about some things. How is this becoming hot or cold related to heat? Okay, and other things like heat gain and heat loss, expansion and contraction, good and poor conductors of heat. All these points are going to be covered under the topic of heat. Okay, but of course, we're not going to just zoom through everything all at once. We're going to take it step by step. Okay, so uh, what are we doing exactly for today? Okay, here, we are going to state what is heat and temperature. Okay, so we are first learning the definitions of heat and temperature first before we move on. And we're going to identify and list some common sources of heat. Where can you actually find heat? 
And next, we are going to look at some of the proper instruments in order to measure temperature. Okay, you, by this time, you'll know what temperature means exactly. And lastly, how do you read a thermometer, which is a, an, a type of instrument used to measure temperature? Okay, these are the four things that we are learning for today. Okay, anyone has any questions? Even though we have barely started yet, I see the chat moving super fast. Okay, no questions related. Of course, there are bubble questions. They'll be at the end of the lesson, near the mid to the end of the lesson after we've learned something new. Okay, uh, moderator, can you help Gabriella, please? 67561. No, there is no Kahoot, but there are lots of bubbles in today's bubbly questions. Okay, so today we are going to challenge ourselves again. Have you seen this before? We're going to challenge ourselves again. Okay, haven't seen this before, right? Okay, so in case there are other new students who just come in, uh, first of all, welcome to your P4 science lesson. Okay, today, as we are going through the lesson, we are going... Hold on, hold on, I didn't ask you to choose yet. Okay, as we are going through the questions, I am going to pose a challenge to you. Okay, so how many percent of the class will get all the questions correct? Okay, so as you answer the questions, I'm going to see how many of you guys get it correct. And if we hit a certain percentage, you are going to get yourself more bubbles for the next lesson. Okay, so don't spam yet. You spam, I reduce your bubbles, huh? Don't spam, don't spam. Okay, so you just need to type in your option one time into the chat. Please select your challenge. Do you think you can achieve 30, 50, 70, or 90% of the questions correct for today's bubbly questions? Ooh, I see. Wow, a lot of these, a lot of C, C's and B's. Okay, stop. No more. Okay, so we are in the middle between C and D. Wow, very high confidence today. Okay, so this would be your challenge range. Okay, so what's at the end of this challenge? Okay, stop spamming, please. Thank you. Okay, 90%. Huh? 90%. Okay, okay, okay Brian, stop spamming. Okay, you are the only one who's spamming already. Okay, so um, between these two, what if the class manages to get that, um, manage to get the challenge cleared by the end of today? I am going to multiply three. Okay, three times of bubbles if you get 70% and above for each of the questions you are correct. Okay, if you get more than 90%, more than 90, I'm going to multiply four times for your next lesson. Okay, yeah, no joke. Okay, so a five bubble question is going to worth 15 bubbles and uh, or 20 bubbles respectively. Okay, so it's going to be a bubble booster for you. So work hard for today's lesson and we'll see the results in our next one. Okay, if you have 15 bubbles questions, then you times three, 45 per question. And if you time four, times four, then it's a 60 bubble question, so on and so forth. Okay, yeah, this is a dream come true. <laughs> okay, so work really hard for today's lesson. Make sure you understand and ask questions along the way, and then we can clear as many students as possible to get more bubbles the next lesson. Okay, now let's move on into the first thing. Okay, definition of heat. What is actually heat? What is actually heat? What actually is heat? Okay, heat is a form of energy okay you heard about this term being thrown around from here and there so what does that mean okay before we go into what an energy means heat is a form of energy that makes things what it makes things what it makes things Ooh, okay i see the word hot or warm being thrown around okay it makes things warm slash hot Okay, we're not going to define what is which yet. Okay, so just to get an idea of what do you think is the difference between hot versus warm. Okay, heat is a form of energy that makes things hot or heat is a form of energy that makes things warm. Okay, so what you're going to do is if you have a device with you, please scan the QR code 
and enter into the Google form. If you are not able to do that, please access the link that the moderator will be sending out in the group chat right now. Okay, so just wait for the message by the moderator. Very well done. Yes, not yet. <laughs> What's my code? Uh, if you don't need your code, it's fine. Okay, done answering. I'm going to wait for maybe one more minute before I proceed on with the lesson. No, no bubbles. I just want to get a sense of um, what is um, your definition between hot and warm. Okay, done. 30 seconds. Don't worry if you can't go in. It's okay. It's okay. There's no bubbles attached to it. I just want to get a feedback uh, between understanding what is hot versus warm. If you did it on Saturday already, that's fine. You don't need to do it again. Okay, done. Okay, so what exactly is the difference between hot and warm? Okay, so both of these are considered adjectives. I feel like I'm doing some kind of English lesson. I'm not great at English, okay? Just PSA. <laughs> both are considered adjectives, meaning they are descriptive, okay? They are used to describe things. And hot refers to an object having high temperature, okay? Whereas warm refers to an object having slightly higher temperature than usual, Okay, so when do you say that, ooh, the weather is warm? It's when, you know, sometimes the sun is fully and directly shining on you. There's no clouds in sight and it feels like everyone is melting from the heat. And you say that, oh, today is warm, okay, compared to other days. So when you say that it's warm, it means that it is slightly higher than usual, Okay, and what about hot? When you say hot, okay, this tea is hot. This coffee is hot. The boiling water is hot. It just means that it has a high temperature. Okay, so that, that is the slight difference between hot versus warm. Okay, hot versus warm. Okay, so know the differences between those two. Now, what about this one then? How should we define it? Heat is a form of energy that makes things what? Should I write hot or warm? Do I do heat do heat make things hot immediately? Mm, maybe not. Okay, so the term that we want to use to describe the state would be warm. Okay, a preferred term would be warm. Okay. Okay, now what are the different sources of heat? Okay, oh yeah, before we do that, right? I just want to go through what exactly is energy. Okay, you've heard about energy before. What is energy? Can you feel energy? You can feel heat energy, right? When you're walking past a kettle, you can feel the heat energy by radiating off. Okay, it feels warm to you. Mm -hmm. So, do you think that kind of energy is a form of matter? Do you recall what matter is? Do you recall what matter is? Yes, right? Matter is something that has... Yes, it occupies space. It has mass, okay? So, matter is something that has mass and occupies space. Okay, so as a type of energy, energy is not considered matter. Okay, so it does not have mass. It does not occupy space. Moving on in your P4, you're going to learn about other forms of energy as well. For example, like light energy. Okay, so that is something that we'll touch on. And we know that energy is also not a form of matter. Light energy is not a form of matter. And so is heat. Okay, so just so that everybody understands this. Okay, um, <laughs> can skin measure temperature? Okay, we'll answer the question when we move on to the part about temperature. Okay. Yes, energy does not have mass. It does not occupy space. Okay. 
Now, let's go back into here. Okay, so what are the different sources of heat? What does source mean? Okay, so source just means that things that are able to give out heat. Okay, there are plenty of things that are able to give out heat and we can categorize them. Okay, first of all, we have burning fuels. Okay, burning fuels such as what and what produces heat? What can we burn? We have, yes, things like wood, you have charcoal, we have oil. There are many, many different examples. Okay, wood, charcoal, oil, you have uh, gases as well. Very good. When you see that at home, sometimes when you're cooking, you can have a gas, a gas burner, right? And it's constantly putting out heat because it's burning. Okay, the process of burning actually gives out heat. Okay, what other places can be a source of heat? What other things could be a source of heat? We have electrical appliances as well. They can be a source of heat too. Okay, how can they give out heat? How can electrical appliances give out heat? Because sometimes they need to produce heat in order to maybe cook stuff. Cooking appliances like electric kettles, they will give out heat. They are a source of heat once it's turned on because it needs to heat water up. Okay, what else? You have rice cooker. So things like cooking, you have electric kettles. You have rice cooker. And what else? Mm, you have oven or toaster. All these are good sources of heat. Okay. And then there are other examples that are not super obvious. Okay. Not super obvious. One example could be light bulbs. Okay. Light bulbs are a little further away from you. So you may not be able to feel it. But when you switch on the light bulb for a very long time, it actually warms up. Okay, so that would actually give out heat as well. The same thing goes to your monitors, your screens, whether it's your iPads, your phones, your tablets, anything. When it's being used for a long period of time, they actually generate heat energy. Okay, so recall, all, all these are considered energy and not considered matter. Okay, any questions so far? Ooh, stars. What about stars? Very good question. Okay, so we can categorize these sources of heat uh, between like natural versus artificial sources of heat. Okay, so under natural sources, okay, we've listed a couple of artificial ones. So natural sources, what can be a source of heat? We have sun, star, what else? Mm, what kind of fires? <laughs> what kind of fires? Moon. Is moon a source of heat? Mm, I don't know. I don't know if that's a source of heat. Uh, we have ooh, lava. <laughs> lava could be a source of heat. Lava that comes from the Earth's core. Mm -hmm. And okay, there are a few others that we do not recall. <laughs> Okay, so yes, all these are considered natural sources of heat, but a lot of other forms of heat are artificial sources of heat. Someone says fireflies. Are fireflies hot? I don't think so, right? Fireflies are not hot. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and attempt some bubbly questions. Ooh, haven't yet. Uh, let's go to this one, okay? Bubbly questions for today. Let's look at question number one. Okay, let me release the question to you guys. There you go. Which of the following is not a source of heat? Not a source of heat. Ooh, easy, really? Good for you. Too easy, okay. Yes, free bubbles for everybody. Okay, so let's see how many students got it correct. Oh, well done. Well done, everyone. Well done. Very well done. Okay, we have 
almost everybody saying number three is not a source of heat. How did you get that? How did you get that? Okay, so we go through all the options to make sure that everybody understands, okay? So we have A, a star. A star is not a source of heat. It is a source of heat, okay? It's actually burning material up in the sky. It is a source of heat. And then what about a lit bulb? A bulb that is switched on. A bulb that is switched on. Yes, it also is a source of heat. Like, I, like I've explained just now, when you switch on light, especially for long periods of time, it actually releases heat into our environment, okay, due to how electricity works, okay? And number four, the flame on a matchstick. Is that a source of heat too? Mm, yes, it is. Because why? What is the process that is happening as you are burning something? Okay, you are burning something. So that's why it's considered a source of heat. Okay, remember just now when we talk about burning, we looked at things like charcoal and wood and oil. During the burning process, heat is being released. Okay, everybody clear? Anyone has any questions, especially from the P4s in the class? <laughs> Your computer is really hot right now. <laughs> are we heat? Oh, we are. Yes, we can say that we are sources of heat, <laughs> even though that sounds rather strange. Okay, but when questions ask you about sources of heat, do stick to more traditional sources of heat. Don't talk about like mammals and other kinds of animals, okay? When you're talking about sources of heat, try to stick to things like, you know, a candle that is burning or lava, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay? Now, before we move on into our next question, this one, what is heat under this? Where is our main source of heat? Where is our main source of heat? Where can we find heat? we can find our greatest source of heat is actually the sun, okay? The sun is our main source of heat. And what does it do? Yes, who is this person who is spamming? Let me just push this person into the waiting room. Uh, moderator, can you put Ching Rei Qian in the waiting room, please? Thank you. Uh, oh, I spelled wrongly. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a source of heat. Okay, let me just edit that. S O R C E. There we go. Okay, the sun is our main source of heat and it keeps the what? It keeps the earth. Very good. It keeps the earth warm. And the living things on it. Eh? It keeps the earth and living things on it warm. Okay. So the sun's heat is actually very, very powerful. Okay. It, it's, it, it's exactly why we are able to survive on earth. It is exactly why things are able to survive. Because where we are in the universe, that exact optimal position from the sun allows some parts of our eyes to melt and it becomes our drinking water and other parts to stay ice to create environments that animals are able to live in okay and if we are one planet uh, sooner or one planet further into the universe or one planet away from the sun actually things would would be very very different there's a reason why you don't see much life in those planets that are nearer one planet nearer or one planet further away because at those positions you'll be either too cold or too hot to sustain any life forms okay so we are at that exact sweet spot that causes a lot of our biodiversity to be alive super cool okay but where can we where else can we find heat everywhere <laughs> okay the sun is our main source of heat and then we can find heat in little pockets like artificial and natural sources again okay anyone has any questions about the sun is anyone doubting the sun <laughs> no 
Okay, very good. Let's move on to our second bubbly question. Fill in the blanks with the correct answer. Let me release the question to you guys. You have 30 seconds to complete this question. Remember, your goal for today is 90% of the class getting every question correct. Okay, 90%. Um, is moon a heat source? No, moon is not a heat source as far as the earth is concerned. Um, if your options are not showing up well, you might need to refresh the options, okay? And also just a quick PSA, okay? If you experience any kind of difficulties, especially with like flickering options, uh, the options are not showing clearly, you're not able to see or hear me, firstly, move closer to your router. Secondly, please make sure that your device and then all your apps are updated, especially your Google Chrome, okay? Make sure that it's updated. And then lastly, clear your um like cache clear all these um, browsing history and those could be actually a source of your problems okay so just a quick little information in case you know you're uh, aware of what to do or if your parents are around you and they can guide you on how to do that okay so let's go into our second bubbly question the sun is important to us because it provides what a animals with oxygen does the sun provide animals with oxygen? No, no, it doesn't provide any animals with oxygen. Sun is a source of heat and light. It does not produce oxygen, okay? Number two, or B, living things with oxygen. Again, it doesn't produce any kind of gases, okay? And C, light for plants to make food. Indeed, the sun is a brilliant source of light as well as heat. And heat, as light is important for plants to undergo photosynthesis in order to make food. And then lastly, living things with heat and light. This is a given super easy question. Number four. Okay, let's see how many students got it correct. Oh, okay, not bad. Still reaching about 90%. Good job. You don't have time to finish. Okay, so in case there are any students who are still troubleshooting, I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to re-enter the lesson before I proceed on to the next part of our bubbly question. Okay? I'll wait for you. Don't worry. 30 seconds though. <laughs> Sorry, I cannot wait too long. Okay, so meanwhile, any other questions from the rest of the class? Nope. How was the sun created? Um, again, go into November's lesson. We'll talk about that. We talked about that. No, we will talk about that. <laughs> Hi, Bella. First time attending lesson. Uh, yes, what hell do you need? Can we spend 24 hours in the planet? We spend 24 hours on Earth, and Earth is a planet. <laughs> Um, you cannot see the chat. You are typing into the chat right now, Bella. <laughs> okay, so all the interactions will be on the group chat and the options will flash in front of you when we reach the bubble questions. Okay, so if you have any questions and if you have any doubts, do kindly record a video of the trouble that you are experiencing and contact us. Okay, now let's move on to question three. Which of the following activities will produce heat okay now let's go i'm gonna release the questions to you you have one minute to answer this you're asking funny questions again now huh? whether this is a source of heat that's a source of heat <laughs> i said stick to traditional ones stick to traditional ones please <laughs> good job all correct well done You have 30 seconds, Troy. Um, how many bubble questions will we have? I don't know. You have to stay till the end of the lesson to find out. You have about 15 seconds. Ooh, oh no, oh no. Oh no, oh no. I see the percentage you're dipping huh, for this question. Hmm. We'll go through the question. Don't worry. Uh, oh, five seconds left. 
Are there free bubbles? Um, no, nothing in the world is free, sadly. Okay, let's see all the options. A, melting of ice. Would melting of ice produce heat? Does it produce heat? Melting of ice actually does not produce heat. So far, what, what, what have we learned about the production of heat? Or production, in inverted quotes. Where can we find sources of heat when we are looking at burning right so b would be a better example of uh, sources of heat burning a heap of dry leaves so this is very similar to burning wood okay wood is a kind of dead plant matter okay dry leaves also dead plant matter so as you're burning them you are actually releasing heat into the surroundings okay and c knocking a piece of iron with a hammer is this a source of heat Ooh, this is a trap question. Hmm, some say no, majority says yes. Okay, this is actually a source of heat. How is this a source of heat? Okay, I'm not sure you have done any kind of knocking before. <laughs> I don't think you will have a chance to do this, but I do, yes, I still do knock things on my wall or fix stuff, okay? So what happens is if you have a nail and you take a hammer and you knock it, okay? After I finish knocking, you are, if you are able to touch the nail, it's actually really, really hot. So what is happening there? When the hammer strikes the nail, something is being produced, okay? Heat energy is being produced. And why? It's because of something called friction. Yeah. Oh, so many people know already. Okay. You've probably heard of this being brought up um, sometime in some kind of conversation. Okay. Friction. F-R-I-C-T-I-O-N. Friction. Okay. When you walk on floors, sometimes you hear squeaky, squeaky sounds, right? That's because of friction, okay? And then when you fall to the ground and scrape your knees, that's because of friction too, okay? Friction actually causes heat. And how can we very easily prove that friction can produce heat? Everybody have um, two surfaces? These two surfaces here? Everyone have... Okay, if, I don't know, if there are any friends out there who do not have um, enough surfaces, you can actually use um, a piece of cloth or you can use other kinds of surfaces. And what you do, take these two, wrap them together. Okay, everybody do this together right now. Okay, and then how are you going to feel? Ooh, this is like ASMR. Okay, I'm twirling my hair together. Okay, how do you feel after maybe 15 seconds of doing this? Yeah, it becomes hot, right? It becomes warm. Ooh, um, you feel tired. <laughs> yes, other than that, I'm asking about how your hands feel, okay? How your hands feel, okay? It is sweaty, it's warm. Okay, what is actually going on? When you have two surfaces that are in contact with each other, okay, that this is going to cause friction, okay? By rubbing your hands together repeatedly, this is going to cause a lot of heat energy that will be formed. And that is why your hands will start to feel warm, okay? So this is why when you see like, you know, a lot of um, people who don't like the cold, when they go into like cold shopping malls, they start to do this. <sighs> okay, because they're trying to produce some kind of heat energy from the friction by rubbing on their skin, Okay, so that is one way that you can produce heat, okay, by friction, okay? And knocking a piece of iron with hammer is also a good example of friction because it is two surfaces striking against each other, okay? That causes friction and consequently heat energy, okay? I look funny when I do that. Do what? When I look cold? <laughs> Okay, now let's move on into our next question together. Okay, which of the following activities are true about heat? Okay, let's go into our next question. One minute, okay. Oh, by the way, the last question, mm, I'm seeing your performance. Huh? I'm giving you a chance, okay? Please try your best for this question. Okay, you have one minute. Let's go.
<laughs> Someone is asking, is rubbing your hands together for heat uh, natural or artificial? Okay, first you have to know when we're talking about natural and artificial sources of heat, it means that heat is being produced usually consistently um, throughout a period of time. Okay, doing this is only a temporary heat production due to friction. So we don't classify that as a source of heat. Okay. Ten seconds left. Yes, very good, Chloe. Chloe Yen. Okay, let's see our results. Very good. Very well done. Which of the following activities? A, heat is matter. Who chose options with A? Eh? Hmm. Heat is not a kind of matter. Okay, heat is a kind of, of, complete the sentence. Heat is a kind of or form of, yeah, energy. Good. <laughs> Someone just says, I like your voice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, heat is a form of energy. B. Oh, wait. Why did I write that when B is exactly the same? I uh, waste my ink. <laughs> what ink? <laughs> uh, C. Heat is produced when a firefly emits light. Is heat produced when firefly emits light? Hmm, no, it doesn't. Okay, fireflies actually don't emit heat. Okay, they have something called cold, uh, cold light. Okay, and we're going to look at a, a video together to illustrate that later. Okay, and then D, heat is produced when two surfaces rub on each other. Is that true? Yes, it's true, right? It's true. Okay, because when two surfaces rub on each other, this is friction oh my gosh what's my handwriting okay this is friction and friction produces heat okay everyone understood this that's why b and d is correct you have option number four yes 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 okay very good okay now let's move on into this one okay so i'm not sure if this is going to work well let me see um if i can click on this fingers crossed <laughs> okay um i will see this everyone able to hear this everyone able to see it Yes, but cannot see. No? Oh man. Okay, hold on. Give me one second. I'm going to delete this. And let's see if we can open this in. Is everyone able to see this? No? Still no? Okay. How about I will come back to this video at the end of the lesson to illustrate this about you no know, fireflies giving out light. Okay, I'll see if I can open it on my laptop instead and show you guys the video. Okay, we'll return to this at the nearer to the end of the lesson. Okay, now let's move on into the next part of our... No, don't say no. Okay, so don't worry. I will show this video at the end of the lesson. Okay, here, what is temperature what is temperature now that we learned about heat and what heat does and sources of heat what can we tell about temperature so basically temperature tells us how hot or cold something is and we measure them in a very specific way called degrees celsius okay degrees celsius meaning this is a standard form Okay, there is no other way of measuring for your examinations. Okay, there are other units that we can use like degrees Fahrenheit, degrees centigrade. But in Singapore, we use strictly degrees Celsius. Okay, Kelvin, Fahrenheit, all are not used in primary school syllabus. 
Okay. Instead, uh, some of you guys would actually come across this in secondary syllabus. So we'll not touch on the other units. We're sticking to degree Celsius. Okay. And how do you write that degree Celsius? Okay. You see that this is the correct form of writing the units. Okay. So, you know, sometimes you write meter, SM, kilogram, as kg, right? So for degree Celsius, you write this symbol, degree with a circle on the top and then a capital C. So if I'm trying to say, oh, this is 100 degrees Celsius, I write it like this, 100 degree Celsius. Okay, the dot or the circle should be above and it should be a capital C. Okay, and I know that sometimes Genie Book, um, you're not able to write that degree symbol. Okay, but we are going to accept if you write O and capital C. Okay, but just to you note know that in examinations, when you're doing worksheets, especially in school, the degree should be on the top and it's a capital C. Okay. Now, what about some of the instruments that we can measure temperature with? So temperature tells us how hot or cold something is. We measure it in a scale, zero degrees, 100 degrees, 150 degrees, 1000 degrees, and so on and so forth. So it occurs in a scale. So how do we measure that is by using instruments, okay? So scientific instruments have been created in order to tell how hot or cold something is. For us, human beings, do you know how hot or cold we are in terms of degrees Celsius? 37, okay? Ooh, okay, about 30, between 36 to 37.4. Okay, that's the limit to how warm a human can be before we classify them as having fever. Okay, so our human body is about 36 to 37.4. Okay, and then above that would be a slight fever and then normal fever and high grade fever. <laughs> okay, so these instruments, okay, um, especially thermometers, they are used to measure temperature. Okay, so another way that you can measure temperature is by this thing called heat sensor connected to a data logger. Okay, very, very long term. Okay, and again, I'll be showing you the video later on. Don't worry. Okay, what is exactly a thermometer? Okay, so a thermometer, like I said, is an instrument for measuring and indicating temperature. So inside this thermometer, usually they have a liquid that would rise and fall according to the changes in the temperature. So if something that is cold, it is going to fall. If it's something hot, it is going to rise. And this is how a thermometer works. Okay. So most traditional thermometers contain something called alcohol. So if you see this thermometer right at the bottom of the slide here, what is the color of the liquid that is inside? What is the color of the liquid that is inside? Um, it's, hmm, I can't see it, but actually it's green. It's not red, but the usual colors are red and green. Okay, these are two very usual colors that are used in thermometers. Okay, and both of them actually contain the same thing, which is alcohol. And it's just dyed color okay it's just dyed red or dyed green because it's easier to read with these colors that's all okay and this is right now what is inside a traditional thermometer last time very long time ago they actually use mercury have you heard of the word mercury before Yes, you have, right? You've learned about mercury before. Now, mercury is actually some a metal that is a liquid at room temperature. And the reason why they use mercury is because they respond very quickly to heat. Okay, so if placed in something that is hot, mercury will rise very quickly and give you a very accurate result. Or if you put it in something cold, it will fall very quickly and give you accurate results. There, that's the reason why we use mercury. 
But ever since they found out that the mercury is actually extremely poisonous, they have removed it from thermometers. And now a lot of thermometers use alcohol instead. They serve the same purpose, but it's just a little slower. Mm. Okay, so thermometers are interesting because they have little readings on them and you are required to understand how to read a thermometer. Okay, so like I said, I'll be showing you this at the end of the lesson. Don't worry. Okay, so how do you actually read different kinds of thermometer? Okay, there are a lot of different kinds. Some are easier to read than others. First one, digital thermometer. Have you seen this before? Digital thermometers? Yes, of course, right? So digital thermometers... They show you digits straight away, 36.5, 37.0. When you go into the shops, you have the forehead thing, and then it shows you the temperature, right? So immediately, you have a reading. You don't need to um, measure, see, and look how to read the reading, okay? But for the usual ones, like the laboratory thermometer, is when you need to learn how to read them. Ooh, someone says reading thermometers is like math, like graphs. Indeed, it is very much like graphs. Okay, so we're going to see how to read a thermometer over here. Okay, imagine this is my thermometer. Okay, this is a pen, but, it's, but pretend it's a thermometer. Okay, so in order to use a thermometer properly, what are you supposed to do? Oh, okay. Firstly, you should always use the thermometer right okay because it is placed all the liquid is placed at the bottom which is the bulb of the thermometer and then you're supposed to immerse the bulb of the thermometer into the liquid maybe like this okay immerse the entire bulb into the liquid okay and hold the thermometer upright and next what else should you do number two look at the level of the liquid okay now the liquid is going to rise or drop no matter what it is it's going to move right so how you're reading it is when you have to see directly at the line of the liquid don't look at that like that don't look like that why why can't you look from the bottom up or the top down why can't you do that Yes, because you read it wrongly. It's going to be inaccurate. When you look from the bottom up, it's actually going to, the reading might actually increase because of how you are seeing the reading. And you, when you look from top down, it's going to be lower than it actually is. So you should always hold it up to where your eye can look directly into the reading. Okay, so this is an example of how you should read the readings properly. Okay, so the eye should always be directly across the level. Okay, directly across the level. Okay, now usually inside the thermometer, this is what you're going to see. Oh, a nice little curve. Okay, a nice little curve of the liquid that is inside. Okay, so where should you read it? You should always read the bottom of the curve. Okay, the bottom of the curve. Okay, the curving is actually due to the liquid um, being trapped in these uh, two spaces. Okay, the two walls of the thermometer. It causes the bending of the liquid. And this is actually called the meniscus. Okay, but you, you study about that in secondary school. So you're supposed to read at the bottom of the curve. That is going to give you the most accurate result. Okay, so if you're seeing this thermometer over here, how many degrees is this? Hmm? How many degrees is this? This is, <laughs> yes, so this is 19, this is 20, so halfway would be 19.5. Someone is asking, how come there's no bending in water bottles? Okay, this only occurs if you have the two surfaces that are very close to each other. Okay, very, very close to each other. What? Is meteorite a source of heat? Um, no. <laughs> Please don't use meteorite as a source of heat. Okay, this meteorite that is striking any kind of earth or planet, it, the friction is what causes it to burn up. 
and you will start glowing and looking like itself as a meteorite. Okay, again, don't use meteorite as a source of heat. Use traditional ones. Okay. Now, okay. So everyone clear on how to read a thermometer? Everybody clear? Yes. You want bubble questions? You want then you get? Yes, you can. <laughs> okay, so before we move on into um, our next part, okay, let's answer some bubbly questions together. Okay, let's answer some bubbly questions together. Here, bubble question five, the clinical thermometer here, what is the reading? Okay, where is my options? Let's go. And yeah. Two seconds left. Oh, well done. Very good job. Okay, so how do you read the reading of this thermometer here? Obviously, there is no need to um, look around your screen and try to get that eye level because this is a picture. So how do you read this? Here is 30 and here is 40. So between 30 and 40, um, how many ones are there? How many ones are there between 30 and 40? There is 10 ones, right? So over here, how many markings do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so meaning every single marking in between them represents one. Okay, what does that mean? Over here is 31, over here is 32, over here is 33, 34, and 35. You notice at 35, the line is actually slightly longer, right? The halfway mark is, uh, is slightly longer than the rest, okay? And then what else? 36, 37, and your liquid stops at 37. So the reading would be 37 degrees Celsius. Moderator pushing in the waiting room, please. Four, two, one, two, eight. Yes, Alina, what question do you have? Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, please have the questions related to what we go through in class, okay? Okay, anyone else has any questions? Thank you, Iris. Okay, no questions? Let's move on into the last bubbly question for today. Which of the following shows the correct position of the thermometer when taking a temperature reading? Okay, now let's see. You have a total of 30 seconds. A total of 30 seconds. How will the liquid increase in the thermometer? Ooh, this is an interesting question. We'll actually talk about this in the next part of heat. Okay, because heat is actually related to expansion and contraction. That is the basis of how thermometers work. Okay, good job. So how should you do um, a temperature reading? Um, obviously, we know that it should be held upright. So one and four is out. Mm, oh, sorry. One and four is not out. One is out, okay? Between two, three, and four, which is the correct option? Okay, do you see where <laughs> the reading is and where the liquid is? The bulb of the thermometer houses all the alcohol, all the mercury, right? So the bulb is here, here, and <laughs> here. So obviously you can you cannot hold it at number two. It's going to measure the temperature of your hand. Okay, so it's between three and four. Okay, so the bulb would have to be immersed in whatever solution that you're trying to measure and not above it. Okay. Okay, so before we announce the results of the um, um, uh, results of the 
uh, today's challenge. Let me just show you the video of our cute little ladybug, not ladybug, but firefly. Okay, we are going on into this one. Let's go and see. Here, is everyone able to see this? Grammarly can help you write quickly and confidently. Why is this on Grammarly? There are over 2,000 individual firefly species, all within the taxonomic family of Lampyridae, which is pretty easy to remember. And these lightning bugs with their flickering light shows make summer nights feel all the more magical and romantic. But how did fireflies manage to catch lightning in a bottle? The answer is found in the bug's butt, or more specifically, in its abdomen, in an organ called the lantern. This organ is a set of specialized light cells, all encased in a translucent exoskeleton. And those light cells are where the magic happens. The phenomenon of bioluminescence, when a chemical reaction in a living thing emits light. Fireflies aren't the only creatures that have this power. Glowworms and certain deep sea fish species are some of the creatures capable Very of cool. and emitting light. But the firefly is probably the Earth's most famous bioluminescent species. So what's happening inside the firefly's light cells? What's the secret to its glow? In the 19th century, French pharmacologist Raphael Dubois, <laughs> working with bioluminescent clams, discovered that there are two essential components to these creatures' light show. He named them luciferin and luciferous, based on the Latin term lucifer, for light bringer. Luciferin is the compound that generates light, and luciferous is the enzyme that acts on it. Today we know that the firefly's bioluminescent reaction cool. plays out like this. A firefly diverts oxygen to its light cells through its oxygen is a kind of and air. Oxygen molecules react to luciferin. Catalyzed <laughs> looks like a cockroach. <laughs> the, form of ATP. the luciferin then becomes agitated and excited, elevating its energy level. And when the excited luciferin drops back to its normal state, it releases that energy in the form of light, creating the fire in fireflies. It's a remark. <laughs> Very cool, right? Okay, so we're going to only watch the first part of that um, video. Okay, so basically there is a chemical compound that is in the abdomen of the firefly that causes it to light up. Now, do you think that this is producing heat? Do you think that this is producing heat? No, this is actually not producing heat heat okay so this is only producing light okay so the fireflies abdomen the chemical called luciferous when it reacts with air that the, uh, the that the insect would take in it causes this co particular compound to release light energy okay and that is how the fireflies manage to light its abdomen up <laughs> Also, anglerfish, ooh, anglerfish and um, some kinds of jellyfish, they actually work the same way, okay? Also by, uh, via this uh, process called uh, bioluminescence, okay? So whereby the certain kind of chemical compound, it meets with other kinds of like, for example, air, water, or the food that they take in, it is able to transmit light or produce light, okay? And that is how they're able to like, glow in the dark, or produce and become a source of light. Yes, stop spamming, please. Shing. Hmm. Is the air CO2? No, air is actually um, the portion of air that the inside requires is oxygen. Hmm. Yes, questions? Can you send the link of the second video? Okay, let's see if I have the link for the second video. Mm, here. Okay, this is the link for the second video. You may find it in YouTube. Um, the user called Sarguna. <laughs> okay, unfortunately, I may not have the time to show this um, video to you in today's lesson, but this is just for additional knowledge, okay? Just to see how a heat sensor attached to a data logger works, okay? So if we do have time, I will show you this video the next week instead.